All right, now we're on to the questions. We're on to the questions. Um, why you guys ask me for advice, I know why, because you just want to hear me read out loud. I know it is. I know you don't take it seriously, and uh, anybody takes this seriously, you're on your own. This is a disclaimer, all right? Why would you take advice from me? I went to summer school two out of four years in high school, should have gone all four. My sophomore teacher hooked me up, gave me the D minus, and senior year, it was like, what's the point? Evidently, I have to learn a trade. All right, comic book stuff. Uh, Dear Billy Unbreakable, we all know how you hate comic con stuff. I actually, I don't. I don't. It's just, they're an easy target and I'm lazy. You know what I mean? I don't know. I, 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 although I recently watched some reality, I was on a plane, right? I was on the plane, the plane. And uh, there was some show and there was just these guys standing around in, um, Oh, what the fuck? It's a comic book store out here. And I started to watch it and they were all doing that fucking, if this comic guy, comic book guy fought that comic book guy. And I can't, I can't sit through that, but I can sit through, dude, who was better, Gretzky or Lemieux? Uh, I'm telling you, if Lemieux didn't have those years off, I'll I'll fucking stay in that forever. Um, But, you know, I I, I can't get into comic book shit as much as, you know, I liked the superheroes when I was growing up, but then, you know, I I got older and I, uh, I grew up. All right, superhero movies and Loot Crate. I don't hate that shit. I just like making fun of it. He said, you've mentioned in the past the only superhero you liked was Luke Cage, a.k.a. Power Man. No, I like Spider-Man too. Captain America, Iron Man. Batman was cool. More the comic book. On TV was, you know, I liked that show when I was younger, but then it was just sort of silly, too campy for me. Um, I liked the, the Heath Ledger, Batman. And I love that Christian Bale, you know, even everybody made fun of his voice. It, it fucking made sense that he would change the sound of his fucking voice. You know, you guys know what my voice sounded like. If I had a three quarter fucking mask on and I just started talking to you, you'd be like, dude, what the fuck's with the mask, Bill? You know? Anyways, uh, well, you should be you should be excited to know he has his own Netflix series now. Get the fuck out of here. Luke Cage does. It's super popular and getting attention. Not just because it's great, but also because it's topical. It knowingly acknowledges the significance of a bulletproof African-American wearing a hoodie. Uh, Through the series, Luke engages with police officers who shoot him and leave holes in his hoodies. The police often interrogate and harass black people in Harlem who have done nothing wrong. Oh, I got to watch that. He goes, my questions are, do you still like Luke Cage? Will you watch the series? Yes, yes. Do you think it's good to acknowledge Trayvon Martin and the Black Lives Matter movement in this way? Yeah, why not? When you watch those fucking, those Pixar movies, they talk about global warming. You know, they had the ant thing and they go, you know, one ant's not tough, but you got to, if all the ants start moving... They could take us over. That was all about, like, the fucking Bilderberg people. If they can do all of that shit, why can't they bring up that stuff? I love it. Is that, is that a good way to acknowledge this? First of all, who the fuck am I to say that? That's not an issue that, that, uh, that has made my life, like, uh, I don't have to worry about my life. You know what I mean? So I would ask, why don't you ask black people that? <laughs> do you think it's good to acknowledge... Anyways, love your podcast and your stand up. Uh, greetings from Ontario. Um, yeah, I'm just like, that's, I mean, I like when, uh, I like, um, as much as I, I've, sh- I like Superman versus Batman. All right. I like when they do the comic book stuff. And as much as, like, you know, the people can fly and they're fucking the size of an ant and shit like that, the more reality that they bring into it, the more grounded that they keep it the more I like it. And I know Superman versus fucking Batman. They're like, Jesus, how many people did they fucking kill? That never entered my mind. I didn't give a shit. They're like, they did billions of dollars worth of damage. Who gives a fuck? My favorite thing was they were saying that superhero can't, they can't be out there acting unilaterally. Like they didn't like that Superman was going around just helping everybody, regardless of, uh, you know, whether they would trade with the United States or not. And I just love that the United States felt that they could claim Superman. It was fucked up. I guess he got adopted by United States parents and he did get a free education. Yeah, what the fuck are you doing? You know what? I stand by the American government on that one. Um, No, but the more that they can bring in like the, uh, just the real world reality, I I think that that shit's great. And 
the dark. I mean, in the comic books, it isn't always like dark, depressing. They're fucking loners. It's like, I never liked the X Man thing. It just sounded like a bunch of whiny teenagers to me. They didn't go dark enough or make it adult enough. It was probably for teenage kids. Who's kidding who? Um, it probably wasn't for a fucking bald 48 year old male. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get these guys. These, this is our demographic. They, they, these are the guys that are going to buy all the fucking swag. Um, I actually, uh, when I was a kid, I read comic books and I really liked the drawings and the different ways that they would go about it. And when, when you know, sometimes they take up a whole page and they draw something or they'd have like three of the squares would all like a bullet got shot and they just show where it went and stuff. Like I really liked it. And I thought it was, incredibly talented in that thing but i i stopped short of uh like dressing up like them and having like a fucking lightsaber fight you know what i mean um i guess that's where you lose me and you know to be honest with you uh, what i'm doing is what a lot of people do is i'm I'm taking like you know most golf fans are not like those fucking animals at the Ryder cup screaming and yelling like a bunch of fucking lunatics you know what i mean a lot of them are uh you know you know they, you know i went to the masters people the people were fucking cool but it's 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 just fun to make fun of them, I guess. Jesus, Bill, did you retract everything that you've ever said about it? Uh, sort of. I don't, I'm trying. I'm trying to be a better fucking person, man. I, I got to stop. Like, I just that the word cunt and all this stuff like just flies out of me in in public, and it's getting worse. And uh, you know, it's gotten to the point where now it actually, for the first time in my life, like embarrasses me. So I'm, I'm trying to see. The other side of that. And I know people are like, well, then you're not going to be funny anymore. I should, believe me. I will fuck up plenty in my life. I don't need to be screaming cunt when there's children around in a fucking airport. All right. Montreal Pitbull Band. Hi, Bill. I think your special Let It Go did a lot to educate people about what sweet and loving pets pitbulls can be. I don't have a pitbull myself, but I do not believe in breed-specific legislation or banning certain breeds of dog just because they're more likely to be owned by assholes who will train them to be violent. I live in Ontario where pit bulls are already banned. Uh, when Mark B-U-E-H-R-L-E, how the fuck do you say that? B-U-E-H-R-L-E, was, tr- was in the Toronto Blue Jays? You mean on the Toronto Blue Jays? He chose to live alone in Toronto away from his family rather than give up their pit bull. Recently, Montreal Council voted in favor of a bill to ban new pit bulls and other dangerous breeds, as well as imp- impose strict regulations on pit bulls already living in the city, including muzzling. Oh, putting a muzzle on them. From what I read, the bill seems to be a panic reaction to the death of a woman who died following a dog attack. Here is the article if you want to read it. I would love for you to speak out against this super lame bylaw and continue to use your fame as a platform to educate people about it. Dude, I don't do that. I'm not going to be that person. Hey, I have a podcast. Now you should listen to me about social issues. Um, perceived as dangerous. Your bit about Dr. Cleo is seriously one of my favorite things in life. Oh, thank you. I wish everyone could hear it. Thank you so much. Bill, go fuck yourself. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean... I, I, I don't I don't know I don't know what the fuck happened up there, but like I don't think pit bulls are bad dogs. Um I will tell you my dog's a fucking psycho and would try to kill you if you came into the house, would attack you because it's possessive, it's envious, jealous, whatever the fuck it is. And uh my dog is dangerous. And um you know, and if I'm standing there, I can't be like Cleo, these people are fucking cool. But I think what it is is with my dog with its personality and the, the information that I did not have access to. Um, and I don't have like, like this dog, like really like if this dog, when this dog's with my fucking trainer, like, and it stays with him, people come and go complete strangers coming to his house and the dog doesn't flip out. But with me, it does. I, I let it up on the bed I fucking snuggle with the thing and shit. It thinks it's on the same level as me. For whatever reason, it feels like it has it has to run shit. And um, I just, you know, after a while, because I'm so fucking busy, I just had to, like, sort of adjust my life around the dog, which is not another thing you're not supposed to do. But um, 
you know, I could walk it down the street. It doesn't go after people. But if, if someone just walks up to me out of nowhere and starts talking to me, it, it starts barking. It doesn't growl or show its teeth, but it definitely considers it like a threat. So, um, but this is the thing. What I've noticed since having this dog is that there are a bunch of dogs that do that of all breeds when I walk down the street. And what I see rather than the dog is I see the owner. And um, I am not... Uh, you know, I made a lot of mistakes with my dog. And um, whenever my dog passes and I go to get another one, um, I, I don't know if I can do it, dude. I don't know if I can not have the dog be up on the fucking bed. I, I have to be disciplined enough to do it. I actually, when I was in Vancouver one time or Seattle or something, this woman told me, like, she doesn't let her dogs walk on the rug. I come home. She goes, I don't even look at them until I set everything down. They're waiting for her and waiting for her. My dog just gets to do whatever the fuck it wants. And I think that that can be, you know, a dangerous thing um, the bigger your dog is. So um, I, 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 what I would actually say is rather than have a pit bull ban... Um, what I would say is if you're going to get a dangerous breed and a pit bull is a dangerous breed and all that mean, I'm not saying the dog is inherently dangerous. I'm just saying that if your dog goes to bite somebody like anybody's dog can, the level of damage that a pit bull can do versus if you get bit by a chihuahua, you have to understand, you know, you have to respect what you have. So what I would say, rather than have a pit bull ban, um, I would say, what if people before you, you, you're able to have a pit bull, you have to take an intensive course and become a fully educated, great dog owner, which is what I wish was available to me before I got my dog, because I had to learn all these lessons the hard way and, you know, trying to undo all of this shit that the dog learned as I'm leaving every other weekend and I'm in a writer's room all day. It was, you know, like owning a dog is a tremendous amount of responsibility. So that alone, forget about all the fucking horrible people, human beings that are out there that do horrible fucking things to animals. Um, I mean, I'm hypocritical because I eat chickens and cows and pigs and shit. And, uh, you know, they don't exactly treat them. You know, they always say, oh, it's free range. It's organic and all that shit. And then you watch the documentary and they're cutting their beaks off and feeding them cows and shit. And it's fucking horrific. Um, but, <laughs> but you know, these people who fight dogs and these people who like, you know, I mean, I honestly think like, you know, there, there was some case in like New York where this guy just, he was in an argument with his girlfriend. He snatched the girl's dog out and fucking like spiked it on the ground and killed it. And the girl woman's daughter was in the other room. And this motherfucker only got 60 days. It's just like, uh, you know, I I just kind of feel like somebody big enough should have grabbed him and spiked him down on a kitchen floor. And then he'd have to fucking deal with the ramifications of that rather than my tax dollars paying 60, paying for $60 worth of free fucking meals for this guy to be in some fucking halfway house. Um, Like the level of fucking anger issue that that guy has. Like, I mean, that, that, that is like, I don't know. I don't know. But that's 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 really a shame. And that's a really that's what they're doing up there is they're trying to protect people and they, they're not going to throw any money at it. So they're just going to say, all right, no more of these dogs. No more of these dogs. Um, that's what they're doing. So, uh, you know, but I got to be honest with you, uh, getting mauled to death by a fucking pit bull. I mean, do you want to go out like that? I mean, that's that's pretty fucking horrific. Um, but. Um, and then also horrific is them then killing every other pit bull out there. So, uh, that, that would be my suggestion is that, you know, and if you are considering getting any dog, I'm sure that there is, there's things that you could go out. Like I, that's the number one fucking thing that I wish I did. Cause I absolutely fucking love animals. I love dogs. I fucking love them. And, uh, everything that I do, you know, is probably wrong because the dog feels like it's on the same level as me and it has to run shit. And that's why people come through the door and it flips the fuck out. And I have to put the, you know, I just, I just know how the dog is. What I did, I just adjusted to it. I'm just like, all right, I know I'm having people over. So I just take the dog downstairs and I just keep in the room downstairs. Nobody even sees the fucking thing. 
um, that's the way I, I had to operate with my dog. And um, I can tell you that that's one way to do it, but it's not the way to do it because there's that constant anxiety of thinking, oh, what if it ever got out? What the fuck happened? Oh my God, blah, blah, blah. And, and I have to live with the guilt of someone else getting hurt and then I'd get the shit suit out of me. I mean, it's a, it's a really serious fucking thing when you get a German Shepherd, if you get a pit bull, if you get a Doberman Pinscher, if you get a fucking golden retriever. I mean, those dogs can fucking do damage. And the fact that you can just go, oh my God, it's cute, and just take the fucking thing home. Um, forget about if you found it by the LA River and you have no idea what the other people did to it. I mean, I know my dog got abused. I, um, I picked up my hockey stick when I first got it and I was stick handling in the living room, as you do. Right. And the dog immediately ran to the other side of the room. And I was like, oh, my God, somebody was hitting this thing with with some sort of a stick. So what I did was I just laid the hockey stick down in the middle of the room. I went to the all the way in the opposite side of the room. And I just I'd call the dog over and the dog would come over and go all the way around the stick and then come over, lick me on my face. And I go, I go back to your bed and it would go back to its bed. And each time it sniffed the stick a little bit more, a little bit more. And I just baby stepped it to the point where by the end of it, I could, you know, stick handle in my garage, you know, with the tennis ball and shit and it didn't give a shit. But um, I wish I did that on other areas. But uh, I never, once you see your dog going after somebody, you never quite trust it again. And then you have that fear and then they sense the fear and they process that is the fear is the person at the door. And it's a fucking, it's, it's, I've learned so much by fucking up. So my next dog, um, I will not make those mistakes, but um, I don't think that it is a problem with the breed. I think it's uh, it's the 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 size of the dog and the mistakes that I fucking made, you know. So, anyways, moving on. All right, moving to the states. Uh, hey, Billy Sletpeg, uh, I'm a 21-year-old guy from Sweden, and I'm thinking about moving to the U.S., but I can't decide where. I've narrowed it down to three cities, New York, San Francisco, and L.A. Great fucking choices. So my simple question is, where do you think a guy in my age will have the most fun? Uh, and by the way, will your new special be on Netflix? Yes, yes, it will be. Uh, can't wait to see it in season two of F is for Family. Hope you and Neil... Uh, lives continue to be great. Well, thank you. Uh, go fuck yourself. And FTT. I don't know what that means. Fuck, uh, fuck something or other. Um, all right. Um, it depends on what you want to do. All right. You are going to get fucking laid in all three of those cities. Coming over there. Swedish guy. You, got, you can speak fucking another language. I mean, it's over. It's a fucking rap. You can have an accent. You know, it's, it's a rap. You're going to get laid. It all depends on uh, what type of women you're in and what kind of weather you like. If you can deal with the winter, I would say go to New York City. New York City is the Paris, the United States. It's the best one we have. Um, as far as like just culturally, it's just fucking amazing. Um, San Francisco is, is fucking unbelievable too. Like the, the, first of all, the food in all three of these are unbelievable. San Francisco is going to be the most expensive, believe it or not. Um, all that computer money, I guess, has fucking ruined that city. Um, then New York and L.A. is actually starting to, you know, get really expensive, too. Um, L.A., brutal fucking traffic. Uh, there is a drought. And uh, uh, what would I do? 21? You know what, man? I, 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 I think I would go with New York just because if you want to go back and visit, it's it, you're cutting out like five hours of the flight. Um. When you were in New York, I would visit San Francisco and L.A., you know, but, you know, don't sleep on others. Other bunch of great Madison, Wisconsin's fucking great. Pittsburgh's the shit. Cleveland's coming around. You know, every time I go there, it's getting fucking better and better. Um, I love all those fucking Rust Belt cities. Um, Chicago's the shit. Nashville. New Orleans, there's so many fucking places to go. So many fucking places to go. Uh, but I think New York is a great place. It's a great place, you know? And there's a lot of liberal New Yorks there, New Yorkers there, and they just think anything from another country, especially um, any country from Europe, is just automatically better and more amazing. So, you know, and you'll be a good f person for them to fucking sit there shit on the United States. It's like you guys put your shoes on this way and we do it that way. 
It was like I was listening, my wife listens to NPR, and they were sitting there talking about how in one of those fucking, you know, countries over there where they have a million people on bicycles, no one really gets fucked over by someone opening the car door into them, you know, when they parked, because they have this thing called the fucking whatever. They open the, they open the door with their right hand, so that gets them to look over their shoulder. And they acted like it was this astounding fucking achievement. And why didn't we ever think of that? I'll tell you why we never thought of it. Because no one rides a fucking bike over here. 90% of people do not ride bicycles. Over there, everybody rides a fucking bike. Just about. Most people can't even afford a fucking car. They have bike lanes. It's a part of how they grow up. That's the only reason why. It's like I never used to look for motorcycle riders until I rode a motorcycle. And then now I always, you know. I creep over to the left, let him drive along, you know, in between. I always make sure I'm looking for him, you know, and I never did that before I wrote. So anyways, I'm off on a tangent here. Okay, friend being taken advantage of at a fire station. The fuck does this mean? They're making him cook all the chili or are we talking molested here? Dear Mr. Burr, a good friend of mine is trying to be a firefighter and I feel like he's totally become their bitch. Instead of being hired full time, his fire department has him hired as like a reserve or whatever, and has him working full-time hours, basically. That would be nice, but since he's a reserve, he's literally getting paid like below minimum wage. Uh, he's been doing this for around a year or so, and the department he's in definitely is understaffed. They just don't want to make him full-time because they would have to pay him an actual salary. Um, now, I don't know anything about jobs and careers and stuff, but I feel like he's definitely getting taken advantage of. What should I do? Should I tell him he's being fucked over? Would love to hear your opinion on the matter. Love the podcast. Can't wait for F's for family. Go fuck yourself. And when are you coming to Northern California? Um, all right. Um, I would say, uh, I would just say to him, say, hey, listen, you know, I know that, you know, I would I'd just bring up work. How's it going at work? Blah, 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 blah. Do they have any plans of making you full time anytime soon? Listen to what he says and then just ask him, well, you know, how, how long, uh, so what do you, what, so what's the game plan? Did, have they hinted anything about it and just see what he says? Sometimes it's hard. You got to let your friends learn hard lessons. Sometimes you just got to kind of let them get fucked over. I mean, just bring it up, see what the person says. And, uh, hopefully your friend isn't like that guy in the joke and Goodfellas. You know, he, that just, meh means he's content to be a jerk. What am I going to say? That my, my wife two times me? Um, yeah, that's what I would do. I would just bring it up. I've had friends in those situations, and, uh, you know, that can be very difficult. Um, yeah, so that's what I would do. That's a simple one. Just bring it up, ask them how it's going, and ask them if they have any plans. And then I would say, so, you know, not trying to be nosy. I'm just looking out for you, you know, because I want to see you succeed. What, what, what is your plan then? Because uh, there are other firehouses out there where you could maybe get hired on. All right. Jim Ursay Guitar Collection. Oh, Jesus. My buddy Jim Ursay. Hey, Billy B. Bender. I was reading the Guitar Aficionado, Aficionado magazine this month, and there was an art, article about Warren Hayes playing Jerry Garcia's guitar, Tiger, at Red Rocks a few months back. This was the last guitar Jerry ever played live before his untimely death. Anyways, long story short, the article went on to disclose Jim Irsay was the actual owner of the guitar. Well, that's what happens with most, most of those instruments. They are owned by rich people who are not musicians. I'm not saying they, they're not lovers of music, but um, that's where it all ends up. And then actual musicians, they buy their own gear, and then they make that gear legendary. You know what I mean? I was, I was, you know, I did that shit. I bought a 71 Ludwig Green Sparkle John Bonham fucking kit. Like, so then what? Now I'm going to play like him? That was an expensive lesson to learn. <laughs> you know? But I know there's some other kid, you know, going down to fucking uh, pro drum shop out here in LA and he's going to buy a fucking kit that's a particular color and everything and he's going to tune them up or she's going to do it and they're going to have a sound and they're going to put it together and then everybody's going to want that kit so it doesn't surprise me i mean he owns a team in the nfl this guy's a fucking billionaire right um he said he paid eight hundred fifty thousand dollars for it at auction and you know what's great about jim ursay money um is if he's a fucking billionaire all right. Even if even if you fucking if you had if you had a hundred million bucks, 
Spending $850,000 is spending less than 1% of your fucking money. Um, but if you're a billionaire, then what is the, the, the fucking decimal point moves over one more? Is that it? Is it 0.01% less than that? I don't know. He said he paid $850,000 for an auction, not to mention he also owns Bob Dylan's Stratocaster from the Newport Festival, George Harrison's Gibson SG. Jesus, what a fucking collection. And even Prince's Yellow Cloud guitar. Although I appreciate someone preserving musical history like he has, as a longtime guitarist and Patriots fan, I say fuck him for not allowing these guitars to be in the hands of musicians. What are your thoughts? Um, I separate Jim Irsay, the football owner. When you start talking about his guitar collection, then he's just a regular person to me. You know what I mean? So he's just a rich guy that he's a music lover. And I don't think they should necessarily be in the hands of musicians because um, I think that you should be influenced by great artists, not go out and, and try to do what they already did. I think the fact that you as a musician will go out, you know, like I, if I was a musician, my goal would be like, I would want my guitar to be famous too. Like how Stevie Ray Vaughan's, you know, or John Bonham's Vista Light kit became famous. Like none of the none of those things were famous. No one knew what they looked like until they got into the hands of those unbelievable artists. So, um, I think that the re- the fact that they go for all that money and they end up in rich people's hands is just a testament to the greatness of the musician and how music affects people. Even a guy who's a fucking NFL owner. The fact that he's into the dead, he's into George Harrison, he's into Prince, he's into Bob Dylan. I mean, you can't fuck with any of those influences. The guy's got good taste in music, you know. Um, But there's no magic in those guitars, though. I mean, I could literally have Bonham's kit and I'm going to sound like a comedian playing drums and you guys are all going to be like, hey, can you fucking knock it off? You know what I mean? So I don't think that they, I think that they... um, they're just like pieces of history now, I think. Like uh, if you have like fucking Napoleon's sword. I don't think that, that oh, well, that should be in some other fucking dictator's hands chopping somebody's fucking head off. I mean, I don't think so. I just think that uh, if you're into that type of shit, which I totally am, I'm completely into memorabilia, but I refuse to buy any because so much of it is fake. And also, um, I just have enough shit in my fucking house. I don't need any more shit in my house. And uh, I also, I, I, I don't want my fucking house to look like a fucking, a fucking hard rock cafe. You know what I mean? Where I got fucking Jim Morrison's fucking MeUndies on the wall. <laughs> Framed, you know? And there are probably some guy, it's probably, it's a better chance of being Jim Ursay's fucking MeUndies than Jim Morrison. So, um, yeah, I don't begrudge him. And um, I think it's, I think that's fucking awesome that he has it. Because, uh, well, I guess then that's why musicians support, maybe. I don't know. There is something cool to touch the thing. Like, if you could ever, like, just hold that that Jimmy Page double-necked SG that he played Stairway to Heaven on. If you could just fucking hold that thing and just feel like, like, I, I think you just start whispering when you had it. Like, oh, my God. This is a... He looked at John Bonham and would give him the nod when he was coming out of the solo, you know? Okay, that was probably creepy. Listen to me fucking whisper. I, I, I would be like that around that shit. But, um, hey, man, if you got the fucking money, you know, they can have it. So they, there you go, man. Go make your guitar fucking legendary and then see how much Jim Mercy will pay for yours. You know, but then again, you'd have to be dead. Well, Bob Dylan's not dead when you give it up for auction. My dog right now is sitting just to the left of my computer. She's staring intensely at me. She's been fed. She's been out and everything like that. And all that says is she wants to be let up on the couch. And you know what? I can't do it. I'm going to turn it around. I'm too weak. I can't resist. You're too fucking adorable. Why is your head shaped like a fucking muscular light bulb? You ever notice that? You little bear face? Huh? Why can't you be like this with company? Why can't you see that I'm relaxed around them and then you're relaxed? Why do you treat everybody like they're a fucking axe murderer? Huh? All right. That's the podcast. Um, go fuck yourselves and uh, 
I got to say again, congratulations to Bills and that they're turning that fucking thing around there. I always like the Bills back. I don't like their fucking fans because I had a bad experience when I went out there and I wore a Patriots hat. And this, they, you know, three fucking people when I was taking a piss pushed me. Fucking pussies. Um, but anyways, I also had a fucking Patriots hat on in their stadium and I had my dick out. What the fuck was I thinking? Give me Jesus Christ. Why don't I just slit my own throat? But I, I liked them from back, you know, Joe Ferguson, OJ Simpson and all those days. And it was always snowing. And uh, I always liked the Buffalo Bills from back then. So that's what happens. If you start to like a team when you're a kid, you know, even when they become your rival, you don't give a fuck. So uh, psych Tom Brady's coming back. And I'm just going to say a bunch of shit that I already said. All right, go fuck yourselves and I'll check in on you on Thursday.